Hey, what's up? This is the NLA Ninja for Rampant Design Tools. And in this edition of Running Rampant, I'll show you how to use Studio Fire. Studio Fire is a collection of 203 high speed fire stock footage that can be inserted into any scene. It's available in 2K, 4K, and 5K via immediate download or a USB 3.0 drive. These clips are perfect for visual effects, compositing, motion graphics, graphic design, and print. As with the other products, they work in all popular editing and compositing softwares such as Final Cut Pro, Motion, Premiere Pro, After Effects, Avid Media Composer, and more. Today, I'll show you two examples of how Studio Fire can be used for your videos. For these examples, I'll be using Adobe's After Effects. In this series of examples, we will be focusing on creating sports motion graphics. For my first example, I will break down how I created a video display presentation using Studio Fire along with BCC, Film Burn, and Masks. For my second example, I'll show you how to create a fighter rundown animation using Studio Fire and various third party plugins that looks like this. A word of warning before I begin, some of the techniques I'll be using may be a bit advanced, so feel free to watch this tutorial again if anything goes over your head. Without further ado, let's run rampant. This graphic is something you would see right before you show highlights of a player. A video frame of the player looking at the camera and other elements in the background. I decided to create my own version utilizing Studio Fire and see what I could come up with. Let me break down what I did. First, I created a background using a radial ramp with orange in the center. I wanted my team colors to be closely associated with fire and these were the two colors that did the trick. Next, I used some clip art of demon heads because I wanted my basketball team to have a mascot that associated with a fire breathing demon. Using the soft light blend mode, I was able to composite the demon heads into the background effortlessly. From there, I used multiple clips of Studio Fire to finish off my background. Using the linear dodge blend mode seemed to give the fire a much more organic look than before, which is nice to see. I took some footage I had of a basketball player twirling a ball and place it inside of a frame. The frame was made with two masks along with a gradient ramp and CC light sweep and a drop shadow. I created a reflection for the mask frame by using a white solid with a triangle mask along with the gradient ramp. Using the screen blend mode, I was able to eliminate the black color and give the reflection a faded white look you see a lot of times on glossy items. I pre-composed all those and began creating a nameplate. The nameplate was created along with using a gradient ramp, CC light sweep, and bevel alpha. I added a drop shadow to give it the appearance of depth. I used the same method for reflection as I did with the frame to get a reflection for the nameplate. For the text layers, I used layer styles such as drop shadow, inner shadow, outer glow, and gradient overlay to get the look you see now. With all those pre-composed along with the video frame, I brought it back into my main sequence. I used a pre-rendered loop of a glowing basketball for the background element using its RGB and matte clips to get transparency. I parented the matte to the basketball RGB layer and the RGB layer to the frame precomp. This allowed me to animate those elements together. I added BCC film burn to the frame precomp so it could keep with the theme of fire and burning for this animation. With the animation of the ball in the frame coming down then forward, added a vignette using a black solid. With the black solid, I made sure to feather the mask. For the quick color grade, I used Magic Bullet Mojo on an adjustment layer with tweak settings. 
After all of that, this is my player animation for the basketball player using Studio Fire. Now, from the looks of it, it seemed like I used a fire more as a background element than anything else, but in the next example, it'll be that as well as a transition. If you're a fan of MMA or boxing, you might have seen an animated graphic that looks like this. A brand logo shows up, and then you get a rundown of a competitor's stats, and it transitions out. Here's what I'll be showing you how to create with Studio Fire. I'm going to show you how to create an animated graphic like this using Studio Fire, along with multiple free comps, images, and plugins from Red Giant Software and Video Copilot. So let's create this in pieces. I'm in a 1080p comp, and I need to create a background. So I'm going to create a new solid and add a gradient ramp to it. Let's make our star color gray. And let's leave its position at where it's at. Let's change the end color to black. And proceed to move it down as you please. Finish it off by making this a radial ramp. I have an image of an MMA fighter that I cut out in Photoshop. Let's position him towards the left and scale him down to about 26%. The extraction was pretty good, but I just want to refine the mat a bit. With my layer selected, I'm going to type in Matte Feather Sharp. This is a plugin from KeyCorrect Pro from Red Giant Software. I'm going to double click and apply the filter. Now, I could use Refine Soft Matte or one of the refined mats that come with After Effects CS6, CC2013, or CC2014, but I decided to go this direction instead. Let's add a drop shadow to him as well. I'm going to change the opacity to 25%, change the distance to 57, and change the softness to 118. I want to make them pop more, so I'm going to duplicate my current image. Let's change the blend mode for this duplicate from normal to soft light. Let's remove the drop shadow from him and add a Gaussian Blur. Change the blurriness to 30. Let's leave the dimensions at horizontal and vertical. Now that we have our fighter popping a little more with the soft light overlay, let's animate him blinking in. Let's select layer number 2 and duplicate him one more time by pressing Command or Control D. Let's place it at the top of the layer stack. Remove the drop shadow and create a white solid. Let's place the white solid beneath our duplicated image. Now, I want you to change the track mat from normal or none to track mat alpha. Our image now fills with white. Move your playhead to the 2 second 20 frame mark.
Select the duplicated fighter image and press the T key to bring up opacity. Let's set a keyframe for opacity with a value of zero. Let's move one frame forward and change the value back to 100. Let's move to the three second one frame mark. Add another keyframe with a value of 100. Move one frame forward and change the value to zero. Move to the three second five frame mark and change the value back to 100. Move one frame forward and change the value down to zero. Let's highlight all these keyframes, right click and select toggle hold keyframe. Now I'm gonna select the other two instances of the fighter and press the T key for opacity. Let's move the playhead to the three second five frame mark. Let's press Alt and T to add an opacity keyframe. Change that value from 100 to zero. Move one frame forward and change the value back to 100. Let's highlight these four keyframes. Right click and select Toggle Hold Keyframe. I'm going to set my work area to from here to here to see how it looks like. Now, our fighter will appear after the white blinks are done, just like we wanted. Let's take care of our fence and fire elements. I have a start comp for my fence element that is set to 20 seconds long, just like our main composition. I'm gonna use a fence image to create our fence element now. So with the fence image I just dragged in, it has a black background that I need to get rid of, so I'm going to use Red Giant's Unmult Filter. Next, I'll add a Fill Filter and make that color black. I'm going to scale this up a bit to about 134 pixels. Now that I've scaled this up, let's add the motion tile filter to fill up our frame. With the motion tile filter applied, change the following parameters. Let's make the output width 790. Make the output height 460. And click on the checkbox for mirror edges. In your composition, duplicate this image three times. On the topmost duplicate, add a bevel alpha filter Let's change the thickness to 2.3 and change the light intensity from 0.40 to 0.75. Feel free to play with the light angle if you need to. Now that we have our fence created, let's start playing with some fire. For this animation, I'll be using Studio Fire Clips 006, 013, and 038. With those clips in the timeline, you should have 030 at the top of the clips and 06 and 013 at the bottom. 
For clip 038, I'll find the point when the fire comes in. Now that I've found that, I've trimmed the beginning of the clip so that way our clip starts when the fire starts. Let's select clips 006 and 013 and duplicate them. With the clip still selected, press Alt T to add opacity keyframes. Let's change the value of all these opacity keyframes to zero. Move 10 frames forward by pressing Shift, Page Down, and change the values of these keyframes from zero to 100. I'm going to offset each clip so they start at a different point in time. Since these are 4K clips, change your scale and their positioning to your liking. All right, so I didn't want to bore you with me trying to figure out what scale and position I chose. So I did take a break and I added another instance of clip 006 and I got the scaling and positioning the way I wanted it for this animation. Now that we have our fire and fence elements ready, let's bring them to our main composition. Let's place our fire comp at the 20 frame mark on the top of our background. Place your fence comp above your fire comp. I'm going to enable the 3D switch to make this 3D. Move your playhead to the two second mark. Let's set a keyframe for a position. Change the Z value to negative 3000. Move the playhead to the 2 second 18 frame mark. And change the Z value back to 0. I'm going to enable motion blur for this as well as the composition. Before we create our stats boards, let's handle our branding. I have a text comp created here which says Battlezone MMA in all caps. I checked online to make sure this wasn't a real company, so no copyright issues could come of it. I'm using a font called Babis New, which can be downloaded for free online. I made my text the color red, as I want red to be the color for our branding. With the text layer selected, add CC Light Suite to the text. Let's change our width to 842. Let's change the edge intensity to 50. Let's change our sweep intensity to 0. And let's change our thickness from 4 to 2. I'll change the center so it's closer to the text. Now, I'm going to duplicate this filter and modify a few settings. Let's change the width from 842 to 800. And change the center to taste. Next, I'm going to apply CC Glass to this text layer. With CC Glass applied, let's swirl down the surface and make sure our bump map is set to our layer, let's change the height to 0. And change the displacement from 100 to 1. I'm going to use layer styles to add a drop shadow and an inner shadow. With drop shadow applied, 
change the distance to 7. And for our inner shadow, let's leave it at its default values. With your text layer selected, duplicate it. Let's remove both CC light sweep filters. Let's also remove the layer styles. I'm going to double click my text layer and change its color from red to white. Let's go to the effects browser and apply a linear white filter to it. Let's change the angle to zero and change completion to 52. For the CC glass filter, change the height to 25. I'm going to apply the bevel alpha filter and change the thickness to 3 and intensity to 0.74. Let's change the opacity of this from 100 to 22. With the text layers taken care of, select both layers and pre-comp them. Let's bring this into our main composition. I'm going to place it beneath our start layer. Let's go to the beginning of the timeline and move to the 5 frame mark. I'm going to enable the 3D switch for our text layer and hit Alt-P to set a keyframe for position. Let's change the Z value to negative 3320. Move to the 19th frame mark and change the value back to zero. Let's enable motion blur for this pre-comp. Let's highlight both of our keyframes, right click, go to keyframe assistant and select Easy ease in. Now that we have our text layer in our main comp, let's start creating some stats for our competitor. I have a comp I created for the stat bar. I'm going to add a black solid and apply a rectangular mask to it. If you can, try to make your bar as skinny as mine is right now. Let's apply the gradient ramp filter. Let's leave our star color at black, but change our end color to gray. Let's keep it at a linear ramp and manipulate the color positions. I'm going to duplicate this layer and I'm going to remove the ramp filter. Let's apply the fill plugin and change the color to white. After I've done that, let's apply the linear white filter. Let's change the wipe angle from 90 to 0 the transition completeness from 0 to 49%. Let's lower the opacity from 100 to 10. Let's select our bottom layer, which is layer number 2, and duplicate it one more time. Let's place it at the top of the stacking order. I'm going to hit the M key to bring up a mask, and I'm going to duplicate this mask. Let's change our second mask to subtract. I'm going to press MM real quick and change the mask expansion to negative 18. For our gradient ramp, let's change the star color to white. And also, let's keep our end color at gray while manipulating the positions of the color.
Let's duplicate our second black solid and place it at the top. Let's remove the gradient ramp filter and apply the fill filter. Let's leave its color at its default. I'm going to apply bevel alpha and leave it at its default settings. Let's change our blend mode from normal to classic color burn. Now that we have our bar created, let's fill it in with some text. Using the font that I mentioned earlier, let's type in fighter profile in the color red and center it up within our bar. Let's right click and apply layer styles, drop shadow and inner shadow. Let's duplicate the text layer and change the font color to white. And let's remove the layer styles from this. Apply the linear white filter. Let's change our completion to 50%. And let's change our angle to zero. Let's bring our opacity down from 100 to 22. In the project panel, let's duplicate this comp and rename it step bar two so we can tell the difference. In the second stat bar comp, change the font layers to say www.battlezonemma.net. Let's select both of our text layers and reposition them so they're centered. I'm going to bring both of these comps into the main composition and place them above our fighter images. Let's make sure that stat bar 2 is at the very top. With both of the compositions selected, hit the S key and bring the scale from 100 to 65. Let's go to the 3 second 8 frame mark. Well, let's set a keyframe for position by hitting Alt P. I'm going to move them off screen to the right, like so. Let's move 10 frames forward and bring them on screen. Move 5 frames forward. and set another keyframe at the current values. Move to the four second nine frame mark. And move bar two down. And let's move bar one up. We have that animation taken care of, like so. But what's missing from this is a box full of stats. So let's create that right now. The final element in this rundown will give us the facts of our competitor. In the start comp for this centerpiece, I'm gonna create a white solid. And I'm gonna create a box-like mask. Your mask could look something like this. 
let's bring the opacity down to 50%. Let's press the T key and change from 100 to 50. I'm going to duplicate this solid and bring the opacity to 100. Let me press the M key to bring up my mask, select the mask, and duplicate it. Change it from add to subtract. Let's press M twice, and on the second mask, change the expansion to negative 17. And next, I'm going to apply the ramp filter yet again. Let's make our star color white. And let's make our end color gray. And let's change the position of our star color and end colors to taste. I'm going to duplicate this layer and remove the ramp filter. I'm going to press Shift, Command, and Y and change this from a white solid to a red solid. Let's apply the Bevel Alpha filter. And leave it at its default values. Next. I'm going to change the blend mode from normal to classic color burn. Let's fill our text box with some competitor stats. For the sake of time, I will use the pre comp that I use for the example animation. Like I said before, I used the Babus new font and separated everything into its own text layers. I'm going to scale down this pre-comp from 100 to 83%. Let's bring this composition into our main comp beneath our stat bars. Let's change our scale to 85%. And let's position it like so. I'm going to apply a mask to the centerpiece comp. Let's trim its endpoint at the 3 second 23 frame mark. Let's hit Alt M to add a keyframe for mask path. And let's move to 4 seconds 9 frames and set another mask path keyframe. Let's go back to the first keyframe. And let's change the look of our mask to make it as skinny as possible so it disappears. Let's highlight the first keyframe and set it to Easy Ease Out. Highlight the second keyframe and set it to Easy Ease In. Now, our centerpiece will animate along with our bars. I'm making some adjustments so that our mask isn't showing before the end of our animation for the stat bar, so feel free to make any adjustments before you proceed with any other step. Before I move on, let's highlight our stat bar elements and enable motion blur. If you're satisfied with the look of how your stat board looks like, it's time to move on to making our fire transition for the outro. In my start comp, I'm going to place my battle zone text layer pre comp from earlier and make it 3D.
Now for this transition, I'm going to actually be using one of the rampant 3K fire clips for the background. It is known as rampant 3K fire clip 007. Let's disable our text layer for the time being. With the rampant fire clip selected, right click, go to time and select enable time remapping. Now, since our clip is longer than the length of our composition, we're not gonna see the second keyframe, but that's okay. Let's go to the two second mark. And let's create a keyframe for that. Move that keyframe to the 14 frame mark. Let's duplicate our fire clip real quickly. Now, I want these fire clips to ignite in opposite directions, so I'll reverse the scale on layer number two by pressing the S key. Let's go to the chain link and click on it. Let's change the value for the X value from 100 to negative 100. Now, currently we can't see these because they do not have transparency, but that could be fixed relatively quickly. I'm going to use Video Copilot's Color Vibrance plugin. I'm going to go to Matte Alpha and select Only. I'm going to click on this and hit Command C or Control C to copy and apply it to the other fire clip. Now we should have transparency. Let's create the animation for both of our fire clips by first enabling the 3D switch for both of our fire layers. Next, let's set keyframe for scale at the beginning of the composition. Move to the 14 frame mark like your playhead is right now and hit Alt S to add a scale keyframe. Let's go to the beginning of our composition and hit Alt S again. Go back to your second keyframe and change the values to 161 on layer number three and negative 161 respectively. Let's move our playhead to the one second seven frame mark. Let's hit Alt P to add position keyframes at the playhead's position. Let's move 11 frames forward. And change the Z value on both to negative 4,940. Let's highlight both scale keyframes and the position keyframes. And let's change them all to easy ease in. Before we proceed with finishing this transition, let's go back into our fire clips and change the alpha boost to one. Now, let's take care of our text layer. Let's select our text layer, re-enable it, go to the 14 frame mark, and set a keyframe for position by hitting Alt and P. Change the Z value to 3550. Let's move seven frames forward. and change it back to zero. Now, let's parent the text clip to one of the fire clips below and enable motion blur. Now we're getting some weird issues with our, with our text layer, so we're just gonna find the point where we don't see it coming in and trim the beginning of our text layer.
let's head back to our main composition. Let's place this at the top of the layer stack at the 11 second mark. With our transition in our main composition, let's find the point when our frame is filled with the text and the fire. Let's select all the layers underneath and press Alt, right bracket to trim the out points of all the layers. Now, when our animation is done, and we have our transition outro, we will not see any more of it after the fact. Let's begin adding some finishing touches to our animation. First, I'm going to create a black solid. I'm going to place that solid above our transition and add a circle mask to it. Let's change the mask mode from add to subtract. Let's press the F key and change the mask feather to 253. Make the mask whiter if need be. I want to add a quick color grade to make everything blend together and pop more, so I'm going to use magic bullet looks. Let's first create an adjustment layer and let's apply magic bullet looks. I'm going to hit the edit key to bring up my magic bullet looks interface. I'm going to use the sharpen look as it seemed to give the animation that right amount of contrast and pop. I'm going to bring the strength down from 100 to 75. The reason why I'm doing that is I don't want my red colors to get too washed out. And as you can see right now, my adjustment layer probably still needs to be a little bit wider. So let's, Let's make any finishing touches, and I'm going to show you what this final animation looks like. During the break, I made some tweaks to my animation here and there. I also used some sound effects from Video Copilot's Motion Pulse, as well as a music track from my library to get to the finish line. Now, if you followed the steps sort of like I did, or at least closely as possible, you should have something that looks like this. This was definitely an effect you have to approach in segments, or else it could become a real mess later on. In this example, Studio Fire served more of a purpose than before, and it could definitely be utilized in different ways. As you can see from these examples, Studio Fire is not only a versatile collection, but it can be used to manipulate to serve whatever purpose in post production you may need it to. Test it out yourself, and I promise you won't be disappointed. You could learn more about this product and other products by visiting the Rampant Design Tools website here. You can also keep up with Rampant Design Tools by following them on Twitter at Rampant Design. And don't forget to like their Facebook page at the link below. I'm the NLE Ninja with NLE Ninja Effects asking you to stay creative and run rampant. Thanks for watching.